All right, welcome again to another episode of Stuck in the Nail, the only podcast on the internet talking about Star Citizen in the realm of first-person shooter tactics and team and glorious ground combat. That's it. We're the only podcast doing that. Ain't that right, Echo? Yeah, and occasionally sometimes going hard digressing on Discord, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll talk <laughs> shit on all your voice platforms. We don't care. <laughs> well, thanks again for tuning in, guys. This is episode 10. We got some good shit for you. Um, again, thank you. Thank you for if you're watching and if you've watched all 10 episodes, thank you. If we had, like, um, awards to give, like merit badges, you would have the 10 episode watched merit badge. Uh, but we don't have those. So just, just you just get a pat on the back, basically. So, um, what do we got on the docket today, Echo? What's what's the what's the conversation topic? Well, we're gonna round out our most popular episode about communications <laughs> and talk about a little bit uh, information about communications pertaining more to Star Citizen and less about the communication platform. So we're moving yeah. away from that and moving into like how that applies inside the game, uh, what that means, what that looks like, why it's important. So we'll go over things like brevity uh, and etiquette and, you know, maybe uh, communication billets, right? Mm -hmm. Billet responsibilities, understanding why the communication between those those elements and, and things are important um, at different levels and and why communications on the battle on the battlefield is so important. You right. know, out, out of the three main things that you need to be able to conduct warfare, you need to be able to shoot. You need to be able to move. And the often forgotten one is you need to be able to communicate, right? And that comes in many forms, verbal, nonverbal, um, technical, right? Mm -hmm. So like radios and non-technical. So like, um, you know, chem lights, things like that. Yeah. But communications all over the battlefield. And if you can effectively apply communication, you are already leaps and bounds above your opponent. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah, all those like nonverbal ones that are non non technological ones. Either you're not relying on a device or a thing like, just the fact, like uh, the small subtle communication between two units or elements. If if you know team one or squad one is shooting, and you might not have radio comms with them or whatever, but you know they're shooting. Therefore, the default procedure is your squad is moving. Right, like right. It's just this. Your actions will, are also a form of communication. So we'll kind of dive in on yeah, that 100%. too. Yeah, and, and, and your your standard operating procedures are like a baseline for all your communications. Like, I don't need Echo to tell me he's going left. I just need to see him going left. Therefore, I go right. Right? Like, right. we're communicating without a radio or verbal or like all that whole list you just lift off. We're communicating mm -hmm. without all that. It's pretty cool to do. So right. we'll, we'll discuss all those layers and dive into them. But um, this is going to be a lot more focused on the individual. Um, a, a term we like to use is in individual actions. What? Because that's if you think about a team, right? A team is all the actions. The sum total of everyone's combined actions equals the outcome of that team, whether they're successful yeah. or not. And uh, comms is very much an individual aspect. We were talking about a lot of bigger picture stuff. So this it was probably our most, um, <laughs> our, our least popular episode so far. But you were saying earlier, we got a lot more reactions from that one because it's applicable at upper org levels. So hopefully that right. was helpful for a lot of people. So thank you. It was a CKD I wanted to shout out. Uh, they were reaching yep. out with some good info and questions. OAC is always like, they so at least we got the point across for you guys. Like there are some better platforms out there and things. Um, so yeah, the, let's let's dive in on the individual as, aspects. We were talking yeah. about brevity, right? Yeah. So brevity, uh, I think it'll be important if you and I both define what we think brevity is, and hopefully in there there's some some truth, right? Yeah. Um, so brevity to me is is quickly and efficiently getting what I need out like over radio or talking um, to an individual for an individual to understand my idea. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if I tell you daft, I need you to turn left and pull security that way. If you go left and pull security, then I have effectively used brevity to communicate to you what I need you to do. Right. right. Yeah. That's a very um, concise way for you to tell me something yeah. to do. It's assignment. a concise, shorthanded verbal 
way of communicating, right? And I don't have to say, Daft, I need you to pull your FS9 out. I need, need you to press your A key and look left. And then I need you to swipe <laughs> your mouse to the left. And then I need you to hit the control key and kneel. And then I need you to look from this direction to this direction. And um, if you see any bad guys, this is what I need you to do. If you don't see any bad guys, this is what I need you to do. If you don't hear this, this is what I need. You know, you see what I mean? Like, yes. you see how that compounds and like now something else is happening while I'm trying to explain that to you. And that individual that needs to get his information across can't mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm clogging up the, the, the network, right? Yeah. So brevity to me is daft, look left, pull security. Yep. You already know how to look left. That's easy. And, based on your terminology within your org, you know what security means, right? Right. And so So it's like a it's like an agreed upon set of terminology and brevity or the word abbreviate, right? Brev. Uh I'm not a doctorate. I don't have a degree in anything. I'm not an intelligent person, but I'm pretty sure those that those go back to the root word in Latin of of something, <laughs> right? So abbreviate and brevity are tied together. So I kind of think of brevity as you're abbreviating your instructions, and you're using that on a, a set of terminology that your entire group has agreed upon. Because every unit, if we're getting into real life, like every unit has a little bit different terminology mm -hmm. for stuff, and then you start doing some partnership with like you know Canada or like other countries that we might have bumped into, like they use completely different word sets, you know, that mean the same thing, but they just have agreed upon a different set of terminology, right? Right. So, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, and I would just agree with your definition of brevity. It's just an abbreviated, effective way to communicate and convey an idea to yeah. somebody. Um, so I think terminology I, is a big one. Oh, sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. <clears throat> no, no, yeah, that's uh, brevity is important, right? Like, I don't want to glass over brevity like like it's not an important thing. Uh, how many times have you been in a communication structure somewhere and you just have that guy that's talking and talking and talking and you can't get your, you know, like I see a bad guy and I need to let people know I see a bad guy. Right. And there's ways you can. I'm sure orgs have certain ways to be like, hey, shut up. I need to say something. Right. Um, and, and those important, you know, like break, break, break or, or whatever. The, again, terminology to help define mm. the setting of the scenario right again communicating um but again if you could keep yourself to that three to five second communication like verbal burst over the virtual radio right like you're doing your team a, a, a service and absolutely uh, clearing keeping comms clear yeah um so part of brevity too right it's a clear and concise way to get an idea out there it's abbreviated we've touched on that now What's the etiquette, right? So let's make this a little more tangible to everybody. You're in a Discord or a Gilded, whatever voice platform you use, whether you're pushed to talk or not, what's the etiquette? Maybe we could talk about real-world radio etiquette and see what kind of transfers over. So um, from your experience, Echo, like what's, what's basic radio etiquette for you? So basic radio etiquette for me is, is one – at least with military radios, right? Um, something that you always get is static or interference or some kind of like, uh, it's not always clear, right? It's not like calling on a cell phone nowadays. Like that stuff can be staticky and, and sometimes hard to understand who's talking. So etiquette for me is always, hey, uh, this is me, right? So, hey, uh, daft, I, I'm, I'm calling. This is me calling attention to the person that I want to talk to. Mm -hmm. So daft. This is Echo. I'm letting Daft know who is calling for him. And then I'm passing my brevity across, right? Daft, yeah. this is Echo. I need to turn left and pull security. Yeah. Hey, you, Daft does this it. is me, right? Hey, you, exactly. this is right? me. That's like um, a basic format. Yeah, yeah. The other thing is stepping on people, which with military radios is hard to do because, and I don't remember the exact terminology for all of this stuff, but essentially it's, it's, only one can transmit at a time. You yeah. can key your mic and everybody can transmit, but whoever transmitted first is actually transmitting across that. Everyone else's communication is lost. Yeah. So it's not a usually, discord lobby. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not a discord <laughs> lobby where everyone can start talking and you just hear everything. Like it's very much one person could talk at a time. So a lot of these rules are born out of that hindrance, I guess, if you will, right. Of like only one dude or one person can talk on that radio at a time. 
So along with brevity, etiquette is waiting until that person's done. So you might hear terminology like over uh, or out, right? So over means I am done saying what I'm saying. Whoever wanted to talk next in the queue can now pipe up and say something, right? Um, or out, for example, is another way to let the, the recipient of your message know that you are done talking about that, that particular conversation. And again, the next person in the queue can then transmit what they need to transmit, right? Yeah. Um, we don't use that. I feel like that's a little bit over like military mil- militarification of, of <laughs> militarification. digital communications. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a little over the top for for video games. Um, right. I think we there's some we were t- discussing this the other day. We we could add a little like uh, you know voice effects and stuff like that, and that there are some like you know uh, games that do support like a in game radio or an, uh, uh, what do you call it a modded thing that you can add to make it more immersive. And if the game allows for that and we can get immersive and have like radio squelch in your ear and like, and do that kind of stuff, I probably would, but. Oh, and I would too, because that's just a good indication of like, I hear a click, which means somebody's transmitting, uh-huh. they transmit. And then I hear a click again, which means they're done transmitting. So yes. that over or out, right? Like doesn't need to be expressed because that click is do- that audio click is doing that for them right? exactly and i know a lot of people turn off the clicks for discord and gilded but it could be one way that you kind of get that on your end right like right. you want to know when somebody's done talking turn that click on right that's a good that's a good point yeah it, it could help you with your radio etiquette now we're talking about radio etiquette not necessarily you know group chat voice chat etiquette so right. hopefully you can pull this for your own individual usage um but yeah, that's a great way to, it just, that's the, the start of it. Hey you, this is me. Um, and over and out kind of overkill, but that does signify over is like, I'm, I've ended my sentence out is like, this transmission is done. Problem's been solved. And I don't need to be on the, radio I don't want to hear a response from you. When I yeah. say out, I don't need to hear shit from you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like, I'm out done. Is, I am is hanging done up. talking about it. Yeah. Out is like hanging up the phone. Like it's click mm-hmm. ending the call. So you hear yep. out, click, done. No response needed. But over is like, now it's your turn. We're playing ping pong. Uh, I have an answer or I have a question, pong, uh, over. And I pass that that ping pong t- ball to you. And then you're like, uh, here's the answer, over. Pass it back, so right? With the example we've sort of been using, you know, uh, daft, this is echo. I need you to turn left and pull security over. Yeah. You know, Daff will respond, Roger out, which means that's it. That's the end of the conversation. We're done. We, I don't need any more information. You don't need any more information. Cool. Right. I, I understood what you had to say, Roger. That's a good example. And I'm done talking about it. Yep. Yeah. And uh, in, in, in realistically, in a team communication, if, if Echo's my team leader of four to five guys, because this context already also matters. If Echo was like a battalion commander and I was running an, a company of like, you know, a hundred plus people, then, then it would be like Roger out done. So now I, I can go lead my hundreds of people and he can go lead his hundreds of people. Right. So, but if it's like in a team where echoes my team leader and I have two to three people, like with just a small group of four or five, if he says, Daft, I need you to look left and cut, pull security. And I say, Roger, we're probably going to be on a team's com. I don't need to say, over and out <laughs> like it's just a small group of people and we're going to constantly be talking so it's never really out click like i'm not going to out and shut off like take my radio headset off you know like so the context of when you say these things matter too so just so you're not confused right. by that example if you're listening to this it is a great example though like out means like i'm done with you don't talk to me again unless you need to talk to me again but if you're mm-hmm. in a small team, that's a continuous flow. I would even argue you don't even have to say over with a team. You're just like, Roger. And Roger. honestly, uh, with my work now, that's not something you really hear a lot on military communications anymore. Is you don't hear over. You don't hear out. It's not widely used. Mo- again, mostly because the contracts that I do are small teams. So like, yeah, small team, you know, it's not, yeah. it's just not like if you're, you're communicating back to the talk, maybe right. Like, 
yeah, Roger got it, you know, but again, it's still like very loosey goosey. That's real. Like when I came up in the Marine Corps, that's how I was taught to use the radio. And then as I exited the Marine Corps and got into contracting, it, it's gotten more loosey goosey because of the way mm-hmm. that we use communication now, nowadays. So you very rarely hear over and out on the radio. I mean, every once in a while, yeah. you might be like, you'll hear it and you go, good, good job, <laughs> yeah, buddy. Nice. You know, like, I think the only time I've legitimately, unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, the only time I've legitimately said over and out, I was like being extremely facetious and like, right. Uh, I wanted to convey that over the radio and like let them know that I was frustrated over and yeah. out. Like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> like puts like put a little exclamation point on the end of that. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, the higher you get, like on, we call them, uh, you know, like in big Marine Corps, a big army where you have a lot of brass, a lot of people with shiny collars. They really like their radio etiquette. Um, they I, do. Yes. Yeah. I, my call sign was Hobbit for the most part, but that was never on our company comms. That was only in squad comms. So you'd have two radios. At least I did. We'd have this big 1980s radio. It's all green gear is what they call it. And then a black little Motorola that I could talk to other squads with or my own team if needed. And uh, I got it mixed up because I had them tied into one one PTT switch. And I like, <laughs> I, I said smoke. My They called me a, I was trying to get out of the Hobbit call sign. So I was like, yeah, guys, I'm smoke puncher today. Trying to get my own call sign out there. And they were like, no. So I like all dramatically on, on company comms, I was like, this is smoke puncher. I copy all. <laughs> so at the end of the exercise, we're debriefing. And our, our CEO was like, who the fuck is smoke puncher? <laughs> yeah. And he just ripped me a new asshole in front of everybody. So, yeah, the officer types, they like their brevity. They like you to say over. They like you to say out. You know, They like you to package that parcel. With a nice little bow it's, on it's there. It's unnecessary communicate. Interrogative is, if we're digressing, <laughs> interrogative is the one I hate the most on the radio. What does that mean? Question? I, I, I heard that. Oh, man. I heard that so many times in Afghanistan. I wanted to murder my fucking <laughs> what you tell individual us what on the other, other side of the radio saying means, that. Because I don't even uh, know. Uh, interrogative? Interrogative is like, I have a question. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> right? Like, as if it's not well enough, it, like, explain, like, Hey, is there a thing over there? You have to preface it with uh interrogative. Is there a thing over there? It's like we I like I I know that you're asking a question what? and you just sound dumb saying interrogative. Yeah. Like, again, it's some sometimes it's just hardwired into people and they it's hard for them to break out of that. But uh yeah, it's it's anyways, we talk about it because it's important to understand like shortness mm-hmm. uh of of your communication mm-hmm. while you're in voice channels, right. Uh, to, to prevent you from pre- preventing other information from coming across at yeah. the same time, a garbled up, right. You don't want to hear four streams of consciousness at the same time. Right. So that's why these etiquette rules are important. They're even more important in a platform like gilded or discord. Um, mm-hmm. Whether you're on push to talk or not, it's really easy for you to talk over somebody else or like two people. It happens all the time. They key their mic at the same time and whoever has the better latency comes across quicker. Right. <laughs> so that's very common in, in the voice platforms we use. Even team speak kind of did that. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just important. Uh, what would you say to someone who's like trying to tighten up their comms? Like how what's a way you can minimize that? over speak or stepping on each other's toes. Well, I think the the next thing I was going to, uh, this kind of folds into the next thing I was going to talk about Beautiful. with etiquette is understanding um, if there's a, a, like a tiered list of what's important to talk about. Right. And we'll say um, troops in contact, right. Or, or being in a tick is more important than say, like telling that funny joke, you know, if, if that's the extreme end of the spectrum here and you have like, you know, enemy spotted and then you have maybe like we're out of formation, right? Like we don't know where we are, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. You have to understand what you're about to say mm-hmm. and the impact that it has for the element that you're about to talk to. So like a hierarchy understand- of information. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. That's a better way to put it. Yeah. So understanding like just where you kind of fit in that communication and then letting people come out with their communication, like, Hey, if somebody's giving you the three D's, you know, direction, distance, and um, description that probably takes precedence over the fact that you're out of ammo. Yeah. Right. Because we can solve the ammo problem 
after we figure out where the enemy's at. And mm-hmm. then you could bring up, hey, I need ammo, right? Versus yes. I need ammo and you're interrupting a guy who's trying to tell the entire element where bad guys are, right? Like right. again, that you just got to understand where that level of information fits in based on what's actually happening in the moment. And so that's, yes. to me, is also a part of etiquette. And that's just one way that you can help clear up you know, your communication when you're talking, um, it's important to get as much information out as possible, but make sure you're doing it almost in a, se- a sequential way, right? right. With That's that a good way to put it. Rating system. Yeah. And it's like, uh, the, the appropriate time too. like, you might have an urgent matter, but it's not as urgent as someone calling in a casual to get your buddy life flighted out of there, even right. though you might have something urgent. So we, we were actually talking about this in the privateers the other day. <clears throat> um, when, when we do a combat drop in Star Citizen, to bring it back to the game, right, because that's what this podcast right. is about, uh, when, you're, when you're dropping in troops or the way we do things with rapid insertion into a battle space, um, a lot of times you can have one player be injured or go incapacitated because of the way we insert. It's worth the risk. It's not always the option, but it is for us a lot of the times. So we've developed... Um, we used to say when we jumped out of the bird or got on the ground, you know, daft, daft hobbit is up, you know, an echo, echo up, so-and-so up, up, up. But it gets really garbled because the guy who actually needs medical attention is like, he might say, I'm down, but like three people said, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. So it's just this like word vomit of everyone's got to say, I'm okay, I, I survived. So we, we, we did away with that and we say, now it's the opposite. You only say shit if you're hurt. And it's really cool because we'll drop in and it's all quiet. We just, poof, you do your thing. I hit my med pen. I'm like, oh, okay, am I good? Like, I'm good. And everyone's listening. And we're all like taking cover in the bushes or whatever. And like, oh. and then it's like, everyone's doing fine. Seals. Yeah, doing yeah. sills. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like, it's all part of the communication. We're keeping the calm, cl- the calm line clear for urgent matters. Correct. Is, is, is important there. So, and then it works too. So we had, you know, Chankov one time. He was like, Chankov down. No one hesitated. There was no second guessing. There was no, wait, who? Who said that? What? It was just Chankov down. So our designated medics, our combat lifesavers that we talk about, like they could just go get him, you know, get him up because he was incapacitated. And um, the important part there is that the lack of communication, right, is mm-hmm. also communication. Yes. By you not saying anything means you're good, right? Mm-hmm. And that's just an assumed terminology, if you will, like silence is means good, right? Saying something means something, right? And you're being specific about what's wrong. Yes. So Great again, point. everyone's still communicating. We're just not physically communicating verbally with with voice that I'm okay by me not saying anything means I'm okay. Yeah. And there's there's a time, like if you're asked directly, echo. Yeah. Are you okay? And then yeah, you during say, ace reports, right? Ace like, report. Yeah. That's that's the time for the team lead to know. Like, I need to know what your health percentage is at. I need to know what your ammo's at, and I need to know what your you know food and water's at, right? Mm-hmm. And if you know everyone screams green, cool. But if that there's that one guy that's like black, uh, well, black on ammo. Well, that dude. All right, shuffle some magazines around. Get echo some ammo. Yeah, right? and dude, ace report is a great example of brevity. Right, right. Because you can say one thing over the uh, the radio, Ace. Uh, all right, like we just cleared a building or whatever. All right, everybody, Ace report. <sighs> like one sentence. You don't even have to say everybody. You say Ace report. Now everyone knows that they need to check their ammo. That's what Ace stands for: ammo, casualties, and equipment. Right. For Star mm-hmm. Citizen, it's a little bit different, but like it's the same concept. Like, how much ammo do I have? Am I hurt anywhere? Do I have the equipment needed to con- finish this mission or yep. not? Did I lose it? Did, oh, shit, on the drop. You know, like paratroopers in World War II, they were, like, losing all sorts of gear. Right? I lost my rifle. I lost my – the I lost the bazooka, Sarge. I don't know where I was, yeah. you know? <laughs> so, like, shit like that is important. And that's a brevity. That's it. It's an agreed-upon terminology that everybody knows what to do like that yeah an ace report is cool because it 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 in in it it it, what's the word i'm uh it initiates an individual action right so if i'm the team lead and i say ace report and daft goes okay that means i need to check my body i got no bullet holes i need to check my ammo okay i got half my mags and i need to check equipment right i have the binos uh if he responds back half on mags or you know responds back daft half on mags 
then I know mm-hmm. if I, you know, the next guy calls, hey, I'm 100% on mags. Hey, you know, Chenkov, give Daft a couple of mags. Sure. So everybody's equaled out. Yeah, and then that part of our communication and part of brevity is having assignments within the team, too. We have mm-hmm. someone who is designated ammo bearer, who's got spare mags, who's got spare shit. We have someone who is a uh, de- designated medic or combat lifesaver or whatever we want to call them or whatever your group decides to use, and, and they're dedicated. So that saves time, and it makes our brevity more effective. When I say I'm, I'm low on ammo, we all know who's going to do it. We don't, I don't have to say, hey, it's not like we're, play, we're not playing Go Fish anymore. Like, does anyone have any P4 rifle? Right. Uh, no? Nobody? Yeah. Nobody? Shucks, I draw a card. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, Hoots at that point being the ammo bearer can just run over and be like, here yeah. you go, here's four max. Yeah, it's right. beautiful. Yeah, Hoots, I think Hoots is weapon. Yeah, Hoots is weapon specialist too, but now we know. Yeah, I'm just, Brevity. I'm just, yeah, I'm picking names. Oh, yeah, Hoots, yeah, who, uh, whoever it is. And the same thing, the weapon specialist billet. That's why you have billets in a team. Because you just say, uh, weapon specialist up. Or, you know, or, or worse, up. like, hey, uh, you're giving your, your three Ds, right? So you're communicating distance, direction, and, and description. And, and it's a tank. You know, if you say tank and three infantry, well, the weapon specialist know he needs to pay the fuck attention. <laughs> yeah. Because he's got the, the big boy gun, right? Yeah. Like he's the one running over there with the launcher or the rail gun, um, getting ready to engage. Well, maybe the rifleman doesn't need to, right? Or mm-hmm. or the know, ammo the- bearer carrying that that special weapon ammo, he's gonna follow and trace. Cause like it's yeah. communicated through brevity and through assigning of our teams. And it's yeah. beautiful when it all just trickles. Into each, and everybody just knows where they need to be off of simple, concise instructions. Um, and oftentimes awesome. in movies and video games, when you see or rather lack there of hearing people communicate, it's because they've rehearsed these SOPs. Hmm. They have these billets, descriptions and the responsibilities laid out. And that individual knows where they lie in that team. So, you know, they understand like uh, certain words like tank to a weapon specialist means, okay, I'm up. It's my turn. It's my time to yeah, shine. It's a trigger, right? Word. He's like, Ooh, that's me. Yeah. Or I'm down, right? Like Ooh. our CLS knows like, okay, it's my, I got to pull my med gun out. And you know, there's a chain reaction that happens. It, it, everyone maybe looks at the down guy. And then if they realize they can't help, they, they turn around and post security and let that CLS come in, do their job while these guys are shooting dudes on the outside, keeping the CLS and the down dude alive. Right. Would so. you say, how, tell me if you agree with this statement. So brevity, by definition that we're talking about, brevity is a, a phrase or word that triggers an automated response. Yeah. You could say, yeah, an, uh, yeah, an automated response is probably the best way to keep it vague. I was going to say an individual action, but yeah, oh, it yeah, could be multiple too. individuals though. So yes, yeah, right. it, it triggers an automated response. Um, in the then, shortest way possible. And then to to harp on terminology too, it's important that if you're working with a group, that you probably start using the, ta- the, the same terminology, but it's not something to get hung up on. We were chatting about that right. earlier. So I'll let you have your piece here with that. But an ACE report is a perfect example. If I say ACE report and Echo says I'm half on mags, but but let's say he's new to the unit and we just say green, 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 green means you're good on everything. Because I, 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 that's just where I see some different stuff per unit, right? I've been in some sure. units and then some teams where we use different terminology. But it's so easy to understand that if Echo says half, I'm like, oh, he's half. But if he says yellow, then I'm like, oh, that's also half. Or if he says red, right. I'm like, oh, he's low. If he says black, he's out. You know, Or right. if he says I'm out. <laughs> like it's so interchangeable. So it's not something to get hung up on, but it does help to use those same terminologies uh, the closer you are with your guys, right? Yeah. And I, a lot of that stuff, and I've, I've heard it all. I've heard it probably every an ACE <laughs> every report way responded every way. I've heard like ACE report and everybody's fucking silent. And I'm like, does that mean we're good? <laughs> like, what does that mean? You know like, yeah, I mean? we're good. But it's just, I'm new to that team. <laughs> I don't know how, you know, I don't know their communication comm structure or their, their comm structure. So you know, shame on me, one, for not knowing that. But two, you're like, oh, okay, now that I understand this, nobody's saying means we're good. You know, you're, you're again, leaving that communication open to somebody that's like, I'm out. I need mags, right? Yeah. Yep. It's, uh, 
It's really, it has to be but, well rehearsed. But to your point, right, like about getting hung up on technology or technology terminology <laughs> is that if you're expecting the word black, but you hear the word out and you don't do anything because you're so hung up on here. Well, let me hear that word black. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it, it can actually <laughs> cause more problems. So it's just important that if you're going to set a piece, set terminology, ensure that it's something that everyone knows and understands, but that it's still there's still some vagueness there that you can you can have some room to play that way if someone under pressure says something uh -huh. else right like you you and the surrounding individuals still understand what what they're yes. trying to communicate they're still communicating their idea to you right which is again brevity which is enacting a, a certain action right right and we we have we've spent a lot of time in the wordsmith shop right like, okay, well, if we say it this way, does that help? Does it not help? Right. Or like we got hung up on this. So in, in our previous org, I don't know if you remember this, uh, but we, we, when we were figuring out our IFF, um, how to identify each other and not shoot each other, right? We came up with the colored arm systems that we've talked about before. So we had red team or red arms and blue arms, right? So red and blue. But for some reason, everyone around us wanted to call them alpha and bravo, but yeah. like they would mistakenly like interchange them like Bravo, Alpha. You were like what? So we're like whoa 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 like like this. Just call it red and blue. Like red team, blue right. team. We're like okay, cool. And then we had had no more confusion. So that was an example well, of where we got hung up. Yeah. We're like, what is that? You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 Chenkov's favorite terminology, right? Or term. Uh, keep it simple, stupid, right? Kiss. Yeah. Um, and I think it was like. We were in the middle of changing a bunch of stuff. So there were some people still hung up on one terminology and then some people yeah. like adopting a new one. And it was just weird. But again, that goes back to that whole, like if you're going to change something or you're going to implement something, ensure that everybody's on the same page with that terminology. Cause you, there's nothing wrong with calling red team alpha. Bravo. Yeah. Right. Or blue team Bravo. It just makes sure everybody knows that. Exactly. And you practice and rehearse that so that that is not something that um, trips you up in the future. Exactly. And then that that bring that ties into you can see if, if you were watching last podcast and this, you can see how it is important to have a good place to number one, have this shit written down. So it's someone can read it and it's written. Uh, there's like a study out there too. when something's written down or typed out, it's just taken more seriously. They teach you that in sales and in negotiating and everything. If something is written out, that's why we have contracts in real life, right? Like a written out agreement. So if you have these procedures written out, like red team is called alpha, blue team is called bravo. And if it's written there and then it's disseminated to everybody effectively, like on a good voice platform, gilded maybe, right? <laughs> and it sticks there. I'm not saying shit. I got yelled at. Yeah. In the I'm not saying shit. <laughs> so if it's in a good voice platform, that's easy to find. And it's readily accessible. Then you can disseminate these agreed upon terms, right? This means this for us. That's that we want to do an ACE report this way. We want to say these things that way. So then it's across, it's uniform across the board. So now the brevity is even more effective, right? That's why that's why people use those cool terms. Like if you're watching a movie and they're like, Roger, copy, solid copy, over, out, blue team, echo one, delta seven on the, on the objective. Like that's cool. But like the context, the real context is, is that everyone has to know that shit in order for mm -hmm. it to make sense. Yeah. So the communications from all the way down, the brevity doesn't mean shit if it's not backed up by, by good, good habits and good dissemination of information. Because if one guy's yeah. on his own brevity and then, you know, I'm on my own and Echo's on his own, then we really haven't succeeded, have we? So it's important right. that context makes yeah, and, connection. <clears throat> and I've seen some some orgs with name, like numbered naming schemes, which I, I really respect because, uh, and I don't know what their comm structure is, uh -huh. or, right? Or their, their uh, I guess their element structure or their, you know, their sort of command structure. But um you know, if, if that does have a purpose, like that could be huge. Like if yeah. you're calling me echo five, you know, and, and I'm part of echo team, that might mean I'm the fifth guy in echo team. Right. So that there's some real interesting play on words there yeah. where like naming schemes and stuff can, can really help it, you know, with brevity, right. Like 
um, as far as like giving more information with as little as voice possible. communication as possible, you know? So that's a good point too. Yeah. Yeah. You, getting down to that more detailed, like um, for a real life example is the way an infantry platoon. Um, I think it's similar in the army, but the Marine Corps, it's if, 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 uh, if echo and I are in alpha company and echo is in first platoon, I'm in first platoon but Echo is second, he's first squad leader and I'm second squad leader. It breaks it down like that. So he would say, this is Alpha 1-1. One, one. So yep. anyone hearing that would say Alpha Company, one, first platoon, one, first squad. So Alpha 1-1. Right. One, one. And I'd say, this is Alpha 1-2. This is Alpha Company, first platoon, f- second squad. Alpha 1-2. Yep. So that that's what he's talking about with that numerical stuff. And And some people in Star Citizen are even using it for their own internal teams, like... Yeah. Two, three, two, four, two, five. And you're like, whoa. And yeah. it's really confusing. If you go watch some of their YouTube videos, you're like, I don't know who any of these people are. I don't know what the fuck's going right. on. <laughs> but they, do. yeah. And there's some anonymity there, uh, you know, for opponents there's, as long as the, 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 you know, your friendlies understand what that means. That's a huge, like, that's a huge deal for instead of echo and daft, yeah. you know, we're, you know, that's alpha good one brevity. alpha two, right? Like that's really good brevity to, you know, give yourself the communication leg up over your opponent again. Yes. And that's why code names and call signs are used. That's all kind of brevity as well. Increasing your operational security. I don't yeah, say nobody's calling me Victor Rodriguez over the radio. Right? Yeah. Like, oh, hey, Victor Rodriguez. Uh, we need your help. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like that's yeah. Nobody's doing that. <laughs> or right? it's like it's call signs. It's, you know, anonymity for one, two, it's brevity. Right. So yeah. What if it was, I like- mean, I've even heard call <laughs> signs where like, some of the teams that I've worked with, they've had, they've used like women's names, you know, yeah, so Leslie, like Abigail, yeah. <laughs> you know, or Leslie. Right. But it's like the first letter of their, their actual name, name but yep. it's a theme. It's a, just a different name altogether. So it's not necessarily, again, go nuts with that kind of stuff, but just make sure that it's, it makes sense. And you're, you're communicating yes. that to, to the rest of your, it you needs know, to board. serve a purpose and making it effective. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Making you more effective or more secure, I think. That's a good element to talk about that security. Yep. Yeah, because like Bruce Bruce Wayne, he's called Batman for a reason. <laughs> so yeah. Number one, so he's nobody knows he's Bruce Wayne. You're not like Bruce Wayne. They don't they don't call it the Bruce Wayne signal. It's the Bat signal. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. It's not the yeah. Bruce Wayne mobile. It's the Bat mobile. So yeah, it's it's good to have those things and call signs too. Like call signs are great for camaraderie and they make it fun, make it a little more immersive too. Oh yeah. And there's some ownership like. I mean, I'm short and hairy, so they called me Hobbit. And now I look more like a dwarf because right. I have a beard, but I couldn't, you know, in the military, you got to shave. So it kind of grew on me, though, because it didn't come from me. And it was given, and it made sense, and it was funny. And, yeah, I, I was Hobbit, you know, to a lot of people. So uh, it, it boosts camaraderie. So go ahead and do that, but just know that it's part of brevity, you know. it's, it's It can be effective or it can be – it can make things worse, too, if you're not doing it correctly. Yeah. yeah. Um, Again, there's that fine line of like using terminology to its effectiveness, but not getting tripped up by it. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, good. I think we beat that dead horse. Hopefully that's some good nuggets Mm -hmm. for you. Um, We were talking about, and this is something we're debating or, or, excuse me, that's beer burp. Uh, We're, we're not really debating, but it's open for discussion in our own group is do we have a dedicated, comms guy or radio man or whatever you want to call it so what are your thoughts on that so it's something i go back and forth with and i think as we develop our communication structure a little bit more because it's still kind of in the air i don't think really everybody's on the same page um but at a tactical yeah i think tactical is the right word at the tactical level comms right um I think it's important if you have a team of four, four to six guys, right? Four to six players and they're communicating with each other. They need, I, I almost look at it as like, I'm trying to apply real life thought process to this. They are together proximity, close proximity. So they need to be able to communicate openly with each other. Right. Mm-hmm. And so we move those, those, that team into its own sub channel and gilded right. so they can have that uh, they don't, they're not interrupted by anyone else, but who's in, inside their team. Then since we have two teams operating, 
right there and their two little sub channels their two sub channels by themselves communicating they have to have a way to sort of cross talk and so right now we just plug all the leadership into a right. gilded feature that allows us to cross you know talk across sub channels um but there has been like is there a need for a radio guy right like do, do, is there a need for a team to be able to directly contact say a dropship pilot and is that something that the team leader should be worried about or is that something that the team leader can direct somebody to ask about right to sort of yeah. spread some of that responsibility of the team out a little bit so it's not one person doing all the work right yeah on a tactical and operational level so we discussed that we've also t- discussed like a loose jtac right like somebody who mm-hmm. has direct communication with a pilot who's doing a cast run or some something along cat like a cast mission or something like that um so it's mm. just something that we're kind of talking about is that something that maybe it, they're in their own radio channel and somebody could switch to you know how does that work yeah. are there key binds for gilded to make that happen so it's just i mean just to give you guys a little peek on what we sort of talk about when it comes to communications it's it's that level of is this working okay let's try it no nah, i didn't really like how that works uh let's try this okay yeah, that worked, but I didn't like this part of it. So, you know, it's a, it's an always tweaking thing for yeah. us. Um, I, I, I'm still a, up in the air about it. Like, I don't right. know if it's necessary, right? Like, that's very World War II like where there was like a radio operator and the commander would walk <laughs> yeah. over and be like, send this to command. And then he'd go back out and like, command, command, yeah. command, command, right? Um, yeah, it's, that's, it's a little archaic a little bit. Yeah. yeah okay. It is it can be tough uh having been a team leader it can be tough hearing everything that's going on in one ear also hearing my team in the other ear and then trying to formulate a plan and get that out across right yeah. like to both communities. So it's just it's how much can one person handle and so far what I've decided is like or what we've sort of kind of fell into is that one person can only really handle like one other person talking to like one other element talking to them. Yeah. Right? And so if you think about if you have two teams and then you have a ground force commander, you have the ground force commander, the two team leaders in, in a channel, right? Which is that feature of guild that lets us talk across channels. Mm-hmm. That's one channel. And then you have a separate sub channel for team one and a separate sub channel for team two. Right. And so everybody sort of it's like layered. isn't getting overwhelmed with all this other stuff. And I think that's kind of working for us right now, but it is, we're always looking for ways that we can, you know, improve it and everything there. <clears throat> but um, yeah, it's, it's interesting to like be building this stuff out and seeing what works. I think it's important if, if you are running an organization, um, don't, don't be so quick to change everything like so fast, right? Don't right. L- let it go. Use, set something, make one change, use it for whatever time frame you see fit, like a couple days, a week, however active you are, use it a while, get some experience with it, and then make a change to it. Because mm-hmm. if, if you're just constantly making changes to everything without a, an ample amount of time to really try things on, try them out, like that, you're just kind of shooting yourself in the foot. And we learned that early You're on. losing people too. Like, I mean, to get people to keep mm-hmm. up with all that information change, like that's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's tough, man. It is tough because a lot of people, um, it's different if it's your day, your nine to five, right? Like, you know, in the, in the military, that's your everything. So if they make a change, like you're going to know about it and it's going to be hammered into your skull and it's your livelihood and also your life that's on the line. So you, you take it serious. But like in a video game, there's only so much we can get out of people, and that's totally fine because we have real life going on. We got work, we got wife, kids, family, school, whatever. So it's like, if if I if we're changing, if Echo and I leading our organization, if we change something every day, like you know, it might be four days before Joe Schmo can get back on and 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 see those changes, and now he's got four days worth of ten changes to catch up on. That's overwhelming. That's not how yeah. I want to spend my off time like when I'm trying to relax and just get on with the boys. Like, so small, small changes I think are better for big decisions like these. So, you know, try it out, change it, make sure you have a good platform to communicate those, those changes and communicate your brevity and communicate your terminology. Um, that way everyone's individual actions is just easy sauce, man. It's just, you're just off in the wood, you know, you're, you can just focus on killing bodies 
uh, you know, sniping dudes, whatever they want to do. Uh, it just makes mm-hmm. it more effective. But, yeah, so that's a good one. Um, what, now, we kind of d- dabbled on it, too, the layered comm system. Um, different layers of information, right? There's operational. Um, what is there? What else is there? Strategic. Strategic. Operational. And then operational. You have tactical level. Yep. Right. So when people say tactical training, that's like a buzzword in the in real life, you know, gun industry or like in a game, it's a tactical first person shooter. That means yeah. you are the one executing those those individual tactics and actions. You're taking cover, you're reloading, um, and you've trained your individual actions to be up to snuff. Now, a, a general on the battlefield, you know, he's back you know, in a command center, he's not at the tactical level. He's more of a strategic or an operational level. So that's what we mean by, just to clarify that, because that's been brought up a couple times today. But Well, yeah, and so to put that in game perspective, right, like that's the difference between like Battlefield, which would be a tactical shooter. You yourself, the player, are doing the reloading and moving and shooting, right? The tactics. But then on a, yeah, the tactics, right, implementing those tactics. And then you move to something like operational, which I... You, you can kind of get in the game of squad, yeah. which is, you know, ensuring that supply lines and logistics are getting moved and things like that. And then. I'm yeah, you're right. Like a, no, it's so like, yeah. would you say so? I always say this is my phrase. I'm coining and I've said it a thousand times, a couple times on here, but getting guys, getting personnel, like getting in the right place at the right time with the right equipment. I would. That's yeah. like operational. Right. You're, yeah, that's operational. Yeah, more logistics. To to an extent. And then strategic is that just big picture, right? Like yes. I need I need this team to go here and do this action. I need this team to go here and do this action. And yeah. then that's it, right? At the operational level, there's some dude making sure he's got a C2 to bring in all the ships for the, you know, the the, the ground vehicle team, you know, and then like there, there's another guy for the the actual ground team that is like making sure that they've got a drop ship to right. land the, the troops. And then you then you kind of zoom down to that tactical level and that ground team, right, is the one that's kind of like, OK, we're going to breach this door. We're going to shoot all the bad guys. Yeah, we're going to take then, position here. We're going to cover behind this rock like this is right. And, and then you got it down to the individual like I'm going to take cover behind this rock. Individual. I'm going to reload yep. my weapon. I'm going to clean my weapon. I'm going to make sure I'm hydrated. I'm going to make sure like my armor is good, like everything like that. That's a good point. I don't think we've ever really explained what that looks like in Star Citizen. But I mean, that is yeah. quickly becoming a thing that you have to concern yourself with. I mean, we're prepping oh, totally. for an op. And I, as a, a the, I don't know, the term we're using right now, the interim term is ground force commander. And so my job isn't to worry about what the teams are doing, right? It's... I. I'm telling them this is what I need to happen. And then they're coming up with a plan to figure that out yes. at, the, at the tactical level. And then and you're then enabling I'm communicating what they with, need. Yeah, I'm yeah. communicating. I guess more operational than strategic, but it's I'm kind of communicating a with the air asset and making sure mm. that they're being, you know, covering the ground forces. They're coming in. So it's that big P, like almost chess-like, right? Yeah. Uh, at an operational strategic level. It's more like RTS like big, maybe. Like, you're like, a I got two strategy. Idris's and a fucking, you know, six wings that I need to fucking <laughs> maneuver. Yeah. And I need the wings over here and I need the two Idris's over here. And then operationally, everybody's making that happen. And tactically, the wings are going up. The turret gunners are doing what they need to do at a tactical level. Yeah, yeah. that's a really good point. Like you're not. Yeah, there's tactical decisions. There's operational decisions and there's strategic mm-hmm. decisions. And who yeah. is making those? So right. that's important. That's that's all part of uh, your comms plan. This is they go pretty much hand in hand. Would you say right? Your comms uh, because they determine who's making the, the shots type of information you're going to pass to what element. Yes, right? yes. So if you're at the tactical level and you need to tell, you know, the other team over there that some guy is running towards them with a bomb on his chest, or like that there's a guy sneaking up behind him with a grenade launcher. That's a tactical level comms. That's happening now, right? It's quick, it's fast, it's right there. And you pass that information. Now, an operational level comms is uh, we need more water, ammo. We need a casualty evacuation. Reinforcements. Um, Dropship. Yeah, when's our air support coming, right? So, yep. it's like, a squad leader is, is, is fun. 
position yeah. to be in in any game or in real life. Like in Star Citizen, it's fun because you're out there, you're getting dirty with the dudes. You're kind of crossing over between tactical decisions and also uh, operational. But you you lean towards operational, and you let your your team leaders like they're the ones doing the tactical decisions. Like, hey, we're defending this position. Put your machine gun here. You know, put grenades in that building. Like. It's yeah. it's way. I want to make. I, I want to be very clear. Like I probably fucked up all those definitions, but in my mind, that's how <laughs> that that layered sort of combat system works, right? It's not just battlefield where everyone just runs around doing yeah. tactical level stuff. There has to be somebody controlling that chaos. Whereas in battlefield, you can't. You don't need that, right? It's like the game does all that for you. But in Star Citizen, you need to have your drop ships and you need to have your air cover coordinated mm -hmm. and you, you know so there needs to be somebody at those levels coordinating all that stuff yeah uh, while the tactical level guys are doing their tactical level thing yeah very well said and like if, if you're re if you're listening to this and, and you got a second go ahead and type in the comments if what we just said makes sense or if you have questions about it because uh I, this stuff is like a whole nother episode we could do on just yeah. that and, and hopefully that's helping you out if you're in a position to you know run an org or grow an org or if you have a small group of guys um, we're hoping to help condition your mind just to, to to build on these things so things start making sense for you. Um, and then just enable more teamwork is what we want to do. Just enable yep. more ground combat in the in the verse is the main yeah. goal here. That's all we want to do. The best, the best <clears throat> thing that can come out of this is that we get to fight really, really good orgs. I, yeah. Honestly, at the end of the day, like that's – I want to fight orgs that think like we do. You know, yeah. and so if we can pass that information on and you guys take that and apply it and we run across you, um, it's it's more fun of a fight if it's not a blowout either way. You know, yeah. And then also there's there's a huge element in Star Citizen that's going to come come online when the game comes online. But that's PVE. I hope there's an, uh, a constant threat of, of alien like incursion upon a modern humanity. And I think we'll be able to team up for a lot of PVE games and gameplay there too with other orgs yeah. that we know. Well, Xeno Threats are great. It, yeah, it's already exactly happening. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess not just aliens, but like any type of, you know, NPC tile stuff. So yeah, right. you're right. Xeno Threats are already happening. And we've had some awesome experiences that, um, Echo, how, how did our comm structure help out Xeno Threat? This is back in August, like four or five months ago. How did your comm structure help? organize a 40 man uh xeno threat um what do you call it? oh yeah that's Group. right that was our, like one of our first events as a as a community yeah um it, it i went really well and what was cool about it is is like it was it was simple enough that i did it wasn't really needed to be it was more like hey just go here and then you'll be able to hear me <laughs> right like yeah. you don't have to do anything special um and so uh, the feedback we got from that was quite awesome a lot of people are like wow that was really good i didn't have to hear a bunch of people i could still talk to my guys but i also knew where i had to be when i had to be there and then i got to make those sort of you know lower level decisions lower level tactical level decisions on how to enact that sort of direction right and so we had cargo guys we had search teams we had combat air teams we had infantry teams like and and everybody was kind of doing their own thing uh and and in a 40 man, you know, it was like 38 people, I think 38, 40 people. Yeah. Uh, and everybody was able to effectively communicate with who they needed to communicate to. Um, but then cross channel, there was somebody sort of being like, Hey, I need this, you know, that element would go, okay, cool. And then go respond. Right. Like, Hey, I'm sending over these two and they're going to help you out or whatever. And there was never this like people talking over each other. It was very well organized and, um, it sort of cemented to me somewhat of our comms. I'm a tinkerer by nature, so I'm always going to tinker, but um, it sort of cemented like the foundations of our comms communicate, like our comm structure. Amen, dude. And, and cemented it did. It's uh, it's firm in place. We're always going to adjust and adapt. But I remember being a dropship pilot during that, that, that thing, that event, and uh, just holding position. Like in, I think I was flying a Valkyrie or a Cuddy. I can't remember, but because we did multiple Xeno threats. So I'm holding and they're loading the cargo up and we're, I'm talking to them. They're talking to me. Like there was just this like really good seamless information being shared. And then it was like, oh, mm -hmm. we started getting hit. Choo, choo, choo. And, and I remember you were my co-pilot. And so I'm like, hey, we're getting hit. We're getting hit. 
Uh, like we need fighter support here. And then you were on the horn, and within seconds we had some other some other group. They're not even privateers. Like I think we'd only worked with them once or twice before. They come swarming in and just save our asses, like super fluid. We're like, oh, yep. yeah. Oh, and everybody was just jiving. That was cool yeah. to see. And so that's what that comm structure can enable. Um, that's why we're harping on comms again. This might not be our most popular episode because last episode wasn't. But we're not here for that. We're here to give you value to take back to your group. So even if we yep. help one person out and that helps them structure X, Y, Z, I think that's a victory for us. But, um, yeah, we're, we're cruising. We've, we've already covered most of the things I wrote down. we got layered comms. Um, we've been kind of been discussing individual actions, <clears throat> and there are so, so, so many, so many individual actions. Like the the craft of a soldier, soldiering as a craft, right, can translate into this game quite well. So hopefully we can talk about that in the future. Um, yeah, yeah, I would love to, because I think you could do a whole episode of just on individual actions, right? I think and we then, could. You know, applying you know, self-defense to yourself, the teammates around you. And I mean, it's a whole thing that yeah, uh, within star citizen that matters, that's going to matter. Mm-hmm. Right. Like right now we do bunkers and we know we pull up to the bunker, we land in front of the bunker, we walk inside with no like situational awareness whatsoever. We go down the elevator and we kind of know like there's not going to be anybody in that front part. So there's no situational awareness, but as soon as we turn that corner, everybody gets turned on. Right. Yeah. But what's to say once, you know, um, uh, uh, mesh. Da- oh my god, server meshing doesn't get turned on, right? Like <laughs> dynamic server meshing doesn't get turned on, or figured out, or they figure out a workaround for that. Anyways, give more server power to the NPCs that they won't patrol out. They won't have dudes on those turrets, right? They yeah. won't. So it's like <clears throat> that whole idea of you not having, like, you just running in by yourself, going into the elevator, going down, killing everybody, and coming out. Those days are going to go away. It, maybe not completely, but you're going to have to be, have a little bit more situational awareness, situational awareness coming in. Yeah. And so, like individual actions are going to matter, right? Like, what yeah. are you doing when you get off the bird? Yeah. What and if, how does that help your team? Exactly. What if the NPCs do something different every time, or better yet, PvP? Right. That's when you have. Right. That's that's when the stakes are the highest, I think. And so we try. We I think we can do better as it as a group as the privateers at least. Um, we try to instill like this, like always, let's always act like we're PVPing, right? Mm-hmm. Let's let's hit that bunker with so much speed and violence of action that like anybody who was in there would would succumb to that and we would be victorious. Yeah. So that's well, it's, it's also yeah. a way for us to practice some of our t- our tactics too, right? Without scheduling a time to do that, right? Yeah. So it's more, I guess it's more application of tactics and learning through doing rather than Right. Hey, from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., we're going to do this. <laughs> X, Y, Patrolling, Z. right? But we get patrols in. We we do land out a little bit further, and we do patrol in, and we do change our formations, and we do keep that situational awareness up. So, you know, yeah, when that happens, we're ready for it. Exactly. And um, it's it's really interesting just to, like, see all of this come together. And so if you're if you're wondering if you're missing context of what we're talking about and you're you're like I don't quite understand how that applies like come hang out with us we'll let you roll with the privateers you can come join us if oh, you yeah. want if you don't you know if you don't have to but like if you got other dudes that are in an org bring them along and we'll do some cross training with you guys we're all about playing the game like that's what sometimes I think a lot of orgs forget to do is just play the game um and we always make it applicable and, and have fun so Come on down. Um, I was going to ask Mal, how are we doing on time right now? You're at like one hour right now. Perfect. Perfect. I'm well, good with that. I'm good with that too. I hope the audience is. Thanks for tuning in. Um, next week, uh, I think individual actions would be a good topic. Or Yeah. We... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. Was... <clears throat> I was just going to ask, should we leave it open uh, for the comments section, see who what they decide we could talk about, too, if they got any other topics. If you have a topic that you want us to talk about um, or bring it up or questions, throw them in the YouTube comments, and then we'll get responses out to you. So we're also watching our Reddit yeah. and other places there. Yeah, I mean, I love, I, I think one of, like, the second episode, we had a really good 
question pop up that spawned a good discussion and with us and uh, it brought up yeah. a good topic. So yeah, we're always any listeners like we we want to hear what you guys does this make sense does not make sense you know throw those questions out there i don't i don't think there's a dumb question you could ask right um i i also at some point i'd like to go over like leadership and kind of what that means at some point yeah um so uh, yeah maybe it's just something where we do like a user generated we'll go through all the comments of all the videos and pull out you know topics that that pop up there yeah um, I dig it. And yeah. Leadership, um, individual <laughs> actions would be phenomenal. Uh, structure breakdown. That'd mm. be another cool one. Right. So to, to wrap things up today, um, just focus on your brevity, right? Get those terminologies and definitions defined for your group um, and be clear and concise, right? If you need help with your comm structure, let us know. But um, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's, it's so crucial for you to be operational and tactical and strategic <laughs> just make sure and to shoot move and communicate yeah like, man you can't you can't shoot move without communicating so it's true yeah if you do one of those if you do any of those things without the other it's basically deemed suicide is what they would call yeah. it in a combat situation so um but yeah, yeah that's it y'all that's it for episode 10 dude we're in the double digits man this is crazy hell yeah so um it's a good time to be a star citizen player if you haven't backed the game yet don't wait keep waiting <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but come yeah. on down if you've already got it like come play. if you're a masochist you know go ahead it's <laughs> that's a, a good fun way game. to put it yeah. yeah yeah if you if you enjoy putting yourself through some pain right come on down it is it's good it's getting fun it's getting better it's getting more um pointed Maybe it's not the right word, but there's a lot of stuff that's turning on that I'm like, oh, man, this is really cool. Yeah. So they keep surprising us, which is good, which is new to the yep. Star Citizen. If you've been around for a while, you're like, oh, yeah, whatever. But then this last year has just been like, surprise, surprise. Here's some more. Here's some more. So it's been nice. Yep. It's been nice to be to be fed full meals for once, you know, with Star Citizen content. <laughs> uh, and happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Yep. Yeah. If you're uh, if you don't got a got a special someone, then. Uh, Sucks Stuck in the nail suck. podcast will be your special someone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll be we'll be there for you. Come hang out with Branders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come hang out with the privateer. <laughs> well, uh, that's it from us. Uh, again, the only podcast in the world talking about ground combat and FPS stuff in Star Citizen. Thanks for joining us um, with me, Echo. Thanks for your participation as well. We're completely oh, yeah. different time zones, opposite ends of the country. It's cool we can do this. Um, that's it for us. So we'll see you next time. And we'll see you on the ground. On the ground. On the ground. <laughs>